Um, that, that, yeah, yeah. We were never really focused on, on sort of scandalizing the place, but we also wanted to be very honest about, you know, nudity and sex and, um, the kind of, uh, I think that all that, all of that goes very hand in hand with the freedom of the place. So it was important to have that included. Yeah, for sure. And so it sounds like you are the, the Bo and Yang character from Fire Island. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I mean... It's David Starr from Watcher Pass. Today I'm talking to Brian J. Smith, the director of A House Is Not a Disco, which is premiering at South by Southwest on March 8th, 2024. I'm going to talk to him right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll spend a lot. Thank you. So thanks so much for joining me today. I've got Brian J. Smith, the director of A House Is Not a Disco, which is premiering on South by Southwest on March 8th, 2024. It is a documentary about a wonderful, open, and scandalous place called Fire Island. You might have seen the Hulu movie a few years ago. Now you can get, you know, more of a real-life perspective, more of a backstory in this film. It's premiering at South by Southwest, and I'm very excited to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course, of course. Wow, your your sound quality is fantastic. I love it. It is, it is nice. Like It is nice to have a well-prepared director on, on Zoom, so this is perfect. <laughs> I got I got no one but Steve Jobs to thank. <laughs> well, you know, he he did some amazing things. <laughs> so uh first question, you know, how did you get involved in this? Like what was it that made you want to tell the, you know, a longer, I don't know, more detailed story about Fire Island? I was in Atlanta a couple years ago to I think it was two, yeah, like a little over two years ago. I was working on a mini series down there and we were just getting blasted with COVID. Um, and I was locked up in my apartment, just like, man, I mean, what am I doing? You know, like I just, I, you know, it just turned 40 recently. And, um, I, I had always wanted to make something I'd, I'd wanted like, you know, an actor, a lot of what actors do is it's like, we help other people's dreams come true. You got a writer and a director and a group of producers, and they really want to make this thing come alive. And you are there to sort of serve and, and to help them do it. But I've I've always just had this nagging, you know, urge to go out and make something that really came from my own, the things, my own sense of what's beautiful, right? And uh, a friend of mine called, said, listen, I, I think um, I can get you access to film at the Pines Party, which is a massive party that that they do each year out in the Pines. Um, and it's in the movie. And um, and from there, it kind of, uh, it, it kind of accordioned out. Uh, my director of photography, uh, Eric Schleicher, said, well, I'd be interested in doing this, but only if we kind of made it more like a general community portrait. And if we did it sort of like this, and he had a very specific visual style um, and a tone that I thought was like, oh, it was so, so, so exciting and so filmic. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And before you, we knew it, we were you know, uh, had filmed over a year there and had over 140 hours of footage. <laughs> so oh, wow. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess that, you know, spent a year there, right? That, that has a lot of time to, you know, get people's stories, uh, you know, film whatever content you want. It must have been uh, daunting to have to go back and cut through all of that. And I'm sure there were stories that didn't make it, which must have been heartbreaking as well. Yeah, oh, it's tragic. I mean, uh, one of the things we're trying to figure out is what we're going to do with all of this uh, interview footage we have. I mean, we have in incredible interviews with people, uh, cross generational, right? Um, you know, that that some of them are like you know gay activists that have never been recorded before. I don't think oh, wow. uh, talking about some of the things they were talking about. We're like, what are we going to do with all of this? We just, we just you can't get it all in a in an hour and a half long film. It it just isn't possible. So it was difficult to make those those choices. Yeah, for sure. I mean, almost makes you th need to make like a mini series, right? Like you could have themes of each mini series and just kind of get that footage out there. I know that that is a very long and daunting task, so I wouldn't want to hey. put that on your shoulders. But <laughs> I would love to do that. Your 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 mouth to uh, to Netflix's ears. Yeah, there we go. Hey, yeah, that's a great idea, Netflix. Let's let's do it. <laughs> um, yeah, that, and I'm amazed. Like I didn't really think about that. Like getting access to film at that party must have been a monumental task. Like how did, like, were people nervous to be filmed? Were people excited? I mean, I, I could see it going both ways, right? Some people might be, might love the idea of telling this story. Other people might be kind of like worried of others kind of interfering in this special place. 
Yeah, totally. And we were very, very, very cognizant of that. And, you know, the, to film at the Pines Party, it took months of preparation, you know, getting all of the pr appropriate area releases and making sure that we had all the proper credentials to be out there and film. And, um, you know, we were very, very, very selective in what we chose to film at the party because we did want to protect people and protect their experience. Um, so, you know, we shot a lot. The whole thing we've shot on prime lenses and everything had a really, really, really shallow field of focus. So we were able to kind of hone in on one person and keep everybody around them uh, blurry, in other words. Um, and uh, we were always like, e even in, in, in moments like that, we were always more interested in the sort of like spectacle of the party rather than like trying to like go on a super long lens and try and pick out all these individual people on the party, like, you know, doing drugs or having sex or something like that. It, it was never our intention to like, uh, to, 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 to uh, film people without their, without their knowledge of it. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. Cause I was also wondering though, when I started watching this movie, like it's not a tame movie because the subject matter is, you know, free and open and people are talking about, you know, both their love and life, but also their sexual experiences. And like you said, drug use, but that doesn't really make it much of a movie. That's become the focus. I was expecting that to be kind of a focus like, oh, this is a big scandalous place and everything crazy happens. And that is in there. But more of it is just this wonderful, beautiful community that has kind of sprung up at this uh, at this island. Yeah, there's like a sweetness to the place that I think we really wanted to focus on. There's a kind of genuine, um, ah, shucks, <laughs> uh, sort of community joie de vivre that we really wanted to, to to focus on. Anyone can go out there and see that there's a lot of people having a lot of fun. Some of them may be having a little too much fun. <laughs> um, and But that we felt that was just a little bit out of the purview of, of our our objectives here, which was to kind of like, kind of kind of try to capture a sense of the magic that people experience when they go out there for people that cannot go for the people that can never go to the pines we kind of wanted to give them a little mini experience of like this is what it's like to be out there and it's you can have all different kinds of experiences some people go out there and they party really hard some people like me go out and don't want to be near the parties at all they want to sit by the pool and you know, be romantic and get their hearts broken and <laughs> listen to music, <laughs> stuff like that. So um, that, that yeah, yeah, we were never really focused on on sort of scandalizing the place. But we also wanted to be very honest about, you know, nudity and sex and um, the kind of uh, I think that all that all of that goes very hand in hand with the freedom of the place. So it was important to have that included. Yeah, for sure. And so it sounds like you are the, the Bo and Yang character from Fire Island. <laughs> 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 totally. I mean, I, I, my, my, my experiences were probably just a little bit different too, because I, I, I remember the first time I'd gone out there, I was, I, I had done a show called uh, sense eight that was like on Netflix. The first weekend I went to the pines was the first weekend that that movie that that series had come out on Netflix. And so oh, wow. <laughs> we went to this bar out there and I get a lot of people had seen it and I had the first experience and I, it was a very uncomfortable experience of like being recognized by a group of people. And I fled. I mean, I ran, I mean, it was very, I was like Geraldine page and, you know, sweeper of youth. I mean, it just, I, I, it made me very, very, very nervous. So I, I don't know. I, I was never wanting to be a part of the social um, life out there. I just went out there to relax really. Yeah. I, mean, I guess, you know, that also makes sense, right? If you are going out here to just kind of like, let loose and let your ambitions free you don't want to necessarily be noticed by a lot of people right like that's kind of uh antithetical to what a lot of people go out there for yeah a lot of people go out there like either to be totally anonymous or to sort of like try on a new identity i think some people that feel blocked in certain ways back in the city um they come out to the pines and it's almost like it's a stage you know, they can wear a different costume and they can be a totally different kind of person, whether sexually or socially. Um, and, uh, and, and, but, but, but the, the interesting thing about the film, and we do get into this a little bit, is that you can't really get away from yourself out there and you can't yeah. really get away from the world. It always has a way of coming on the ferry with you. Um, and uh, that can be a difficult thing to encounter when you're, when you're in a so-called paradise and you find that you're not as happy as you thought the place would make you.
Yeah, for sure. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting, I love this about Fire Island, and I think they bring it up in this movie too. Like Fire Island talked about the different cliques and kind of how there are different mm -hmm. kind of cliques in the gay community, which I thought was interesting. I love in this film how you talked about the generational divide. Like you had the kind of the stalwarts, the uh, old guard that had been coming to Fire Island, think it's you know very protective of this place. And then you got some of the newer generation who maybe have different views, different kind of ideals or different things that they are focusing on. And just kind of the, 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 the inherent conflict, but then also the way that it sounds like some of the old guard are trying to hand that off to the next generation mm -hmm. to kind of make sure that this keeps going. Was that a focus of this or did that just kind of come up as you were talking to these people and listening to their experiences? It kind of came up as we were as we were filming it. And it was definitely I'm glad you caught that, because that's one of the things I find the most beautiful about that place is that the generations are really uh, intertwined in a way that they're not even like back, like in the city in Hell's Kitchen or Chelsea. I mean, it's so small, like you go out there and it's just it's just 600 homes. It's just 600 houses and, and some co-ops. And there's one grocery store, there's one post office, there's there's just a couple places you can go and dance. So you are constantly rubbing elbows with people and being forced actually to meet lovely people. And so the generations are kind of thrown together in this melting pot there. And this real mentorship uh, takes place there, this real sense of like this handing this place off to a new group of people is the process that's been happening um, for as long as anyone's been going out there and as long as that place has mattered to people. Um, so yeah, the generational aspect of it is very, very, very special. And I think it's a part of gay life and queer life that I wish we would talk a little bit more about because it's important. Um, and we, we need to really respect our, especially, you know, these are the people that fought for us to have, you know, medications that, you know, like, like prep, Truvada, this came from like the activism and, and just the, survival of a lot of the people that are out there right now um and it was important for us to feature them yeah for sure and then yeah definitely one of those things where you kind of have you're standing on their shoulders and so they have been through a very different experience but they fought to get you here as well so and i also yeah. love i think that that came through very early there was a scene where there's an older man who whose thing is he paints flamingos and sets that up every year he doesn't like the party scene he has this very kind of unique niche and then Early on, you see a, a younger gay couple who I, I don't know. Maybe maybe they had you know great uh, skincare routine, but they looked like they were like twenty five or, or maybe thirty ah. at the most. And they came by and they everyone like, out there's got a great skincare routine. <laughs> that's true, you know, that's true. I should go get some tips. <laughs> but they came by. They're like, oh my gosh, we were worried that this was that, that you weren't going to do this this year. They had been going long enough to recognize that this is an installation, and then. We're worried it wasn't going to happen, but then also that let them connect with this person, you know, in a way that you don't normally see with neighbors or even, you know, out, out in the open. Yes, totally. I mean, that's we saw those things happen all the time. And, you know, like when you're out there, it, it doesn't feel like a big deal. It's not like, uh, you know, like, oh, my God, I just talked to an older person. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it was more like but when you film it and when you see it and it's framed you go oh wow like this is this is really gorgeous if you think about it that this is important that these are people that for a lot of people never really had an adolescence you know a lot of queer people were in hiding when they were teenagers right so to have a place where they can go out and they can have these sort of like formative experience experiences and have mentors and and learn from people that are older and get the stories and get the history um is, is just fantastic. And, it, and it's one of the most moving things about that place. Yeah, for sure. No, and then that definitely came through in the documentary. So I'm just curious, you know, once you kind of decided to do this documentary, how many research trips did you take out there to really make sure you had a good feel for the island and, you know, make sure that you knew what you were going to do? Well, I really took my cue from um, Frederick Wiseman, who's uh, one of my favorite filmmakers. And he's really famous for making these very in-depth place documentaries that are like real community portraits um except his are like four hours long <laughs> you know there's a, it's he's true cinema verite i mean he there he doesn't add music i don't think um uh he just films events and people and then he learns about these communities through filming so every uh, the, the way that we researched was to go out there with our cameras and to film and to film wherever we could film, to film where people asked us to film, obviously to stay away, where, you know, where we were not allowed to film, you know, we were very respectful of that. Um, but 
yeah, we did the research. We did it. We, we did our research in the field and I'm glad we did because it, it allowed for a lot more surprise. Yeah, for sure. And you know, what I love most about this is now you can take trips every year and you can write it off because this is going to be further research for, you know, maybe the follow-up documentary. Exactly. That was like my real, you know, nefarious um, motivation here was like to be able to write off my my Fire Island trips because they are they are expensive. It, it oh, is very expensive being out there. The, the sacrifices you are making for your art. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's, a, that's a brilliant plan. I love it. But uh, you can see more of this research and this wonderful community, this you know, like beautiful, special place uh, in A House Is Not A Disco, which is premiering at South by Southwest on March 8, 2024. I imagine it will run. It, it, it plays a few times at South by Southwest. I imagine it'll run the festival circuit and then eventually make it to either streaming or on demand uh, down the road. But uh, you should check it out. It, is, it gives a very different perspective from the Fire Island movie, which is also a great movie. Like they're they're kind of uh, complimentary in that respect, but this is the director. Sisters. Yeah. Sister. Sisters. Sisters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sisterhood, uh, sisterhood of the traveling speedos. Uh, <laughs> this is the, uh, director, Brian J. Smith. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. That was Brian J. Smith, the director of A House is Not a Disco, which is premiering at South by Southwest on March 8, 2024. It is a documentary about a unique place that has fun, open, welcoming, and scandalous. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.